Uh, I get I get angry. I get depressed when I see a film. Like, but the hope that comes to the surface with the real people emerging and co-ops, and I'm just because I'm, you know, grasping at straws. I'm looking for uh, hope in the future, and it's hard to come up with. Uh, but maybe co-ops. Maybe I'll I'll meditate more on co-ops this evening. That might be a solution. Well, that's enough of my blather. Uh, I wish we had more people here. Thank, Thank you. you all for coming. Thank you, Jimmy, for keeping this show going. And uh, I, I hope things work out well for you. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, is Red River suffering from a cash flow challenge? You know, I think every place is suffering from people not turning out. Mm are not getting together. Well, we'll see how yeah. many. It looks like next door mm -hmm. to us might be bustling, and that's well, good sign. I, I, I hope so. But yeah, I mean, that's another perverse thing that, that I'm still uh, coming to grips with. There's so much on our handheld devices, and you know, you can get everything from your home if you want to. And it, it absolutely, in my opinion, is pushing people apart because we don't feel the same human need for contact because hey I can get it right here in fact I can get the answer that I want right here if I get my own feed uh, um. but it's also I think part of I, I my mind is blown by the movie and all this mm. other stuff I used to do land use planning but before that I was a community organizer cool. so I didn't go to school for development but that's yeah. what I ended up doing for years Great. and but it is fascinating um, and I did community organizing in Boston uh -huh. in lower income Excellent. communities of color around mm -hmm. public transit, yeah. air pollution, yeah. and energy in the 90s when it wasn't cool. Yeah. Obama made all that shit cool. But mm. um, this is when everyone was trying to save the spotted owl out west. <laughs> I was doing stuff in inner city mm. Boston. And then I ended up doing land use planning. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't taught in school. So I didn't go to school for planning. I uh -huh. just fell into it. Yeah. But most planners, there are developers and what they think they're doing with gentrification mm -hmm. and just you take a map and you draw stuff mm -hmm. on it irregardless of people's mm -hmm. sense of community and the history, mm -hmm. that's how they taught they were doing the right thing. Sure. They were going to get rid of the old buildings yeah. and just put build all new. Sure, and slums and blight removal. Yeah. That was the whole impetus behind that. And we're going to create eight lanes of highway because mm -hmm. that will move people quicker, not yeah. thinking that it totally destroys neighborhoods and separates Yeah, depending them. on where you put the highway, and that was it, deliberate yeah. too all across the country. It's right. just astounding when you look at the, the overlay of different things that happen. Another, I should stop here, I will. No. <laughs> Another crazy thing, a perverse uh, unintended consequence is of all things the Fair Housing Act in 1968 mm -hmm. because that established protected groups of people and all of a sudden if you were a greedy absentee landlord it was suddenly much 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 more difficult for you to evict people and get everybody out of your building and do what you wanted to do with it That's because of this office. goddamn federal law now we got this freaking Fair Housing Act and so you burn the building down right. and all of a sudden you're good you don't have to evict anybody you don't have to right. deal with federal fair housing it's just Golden solution. So, with that, my friends, I'm thank, you very much. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks, Ted. Yeah.